Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. Um, this is actually the first time I've hosted uh, a Musicians at Google event, so uh, bear with me. I am a little bit nervous, but uh, I could not be happier uh, to have the honor of introducing today's guest. Um, we're incredibly fortunate to have him with us today for an acoustic performance, and uh, he'll be sticking around for a bit to answer your questions after, uh, after the show. So uh, you can submit questions, or you can uh, vote on questions at go slash ask Franti. Right. Uh, Michael has been well known to Bay Area music fans for well over 20 years, and has earned a truly international following during that time. He's built a reputation for tremendously energetic and positive performances that often combine sharp social commentary with a fusion of countless musical styles including, but absolutely not limited to, reggae, hip-hop, rock, folk, jazz, and if you listen closely, even a few metal riffs here and there. Michael and his band Spearhead are perhaps best known to San Franciscans and Bay Area natives in general for their Power to the Peaceful Festival, which is a free event that draws tens of thousands to Golden Gate Park each year for two magical days of music and, and social awareness. They've been a fixture on the national f festival scene as well, with appearances at Bonnaroo, Coachella, the Dow uh, Solar Music Festival, and the New Orleans Jazz Fest, just to name a few. Michael and Spearhead are currently touring in support of their forthcoming album, The Sound of Sunshine, which will be released on August 24th. And he'll be appearing here in the Bay Area at the Greek Theater in Berkeley on July 16th. So, on behalf of musicians at Google, it is my great pleasure to welcome Mr. Michael Franti to the stage. Thanks so much for having us here today. And uh, I brought my buddy Jay with me uh, to play guitar. Jolene here to sing with us. And my son is here, Ade. And uh, it's a big part of his summer vacation to be out here. And uh, I'm going to play a couple songs, and then I guess we'll do some, some questioning and answering. But. Uh, I've always thought that it would be really cool to do shows uh, where instead of the people asking the performers, would you please turn off your cell phone or devices, uh, that it would be the opposite, that at our shows people would go there and they'd turn on their phones and they'd use their phone interactively during the show. So please feel free to type away <laughs> at your uh, computer or take pictures or film or blog or vlog or if you want to come up here and sing and film it while we're doing it or do a dance behind us or like um. anyway <laughs> here we go one two three come on Put your hands together, y'all. Ah, yeah. I wake up in the morning at 6 o'clock. They say there may be rain, but the sun is hot. I wish I had some time just to kill today. And I wish I had a dime for every bill I got to pay. Some days you lose, you win. And the water's as high as the time's yawning. So I jump back in and where I learn to swim. Try to keep my head above it the best I can. That's why here I am. Waiting for this storm to pass me by. That's the sound of sunshine coming down. That's the sound of sunshine coming down. Hey, hey, hey. Put your hands together now. I saw my friend Bobby, he said, what's up, man? You got a little work or 20 to lend. I opened up my hand, he said, I'm glad to see. They could take away my job, but not my friends, you see. And here I am, waiting for this storm to pass me by. That's the sound of sunshine coming down. Coming down Google, tell me how you feel it, y'all I want to go where the summer never ends With my guitar on the beach there with all my friends 
The sun's so hot and the waves in motion And everything smells like suntan lotion The ocean and the girl's so sweet So kick off your shoes and relax your feet They say that miracles are never ceasing Every single soul needs a little releasing Stereo bumper till the sun goes down And I only want to hear that sound That's the sound of sunshine Coming down Sound of sunshine coming down. Jay Boogie Rock that gets off the sun goes down you're the one i want to be with when the sun goes down you're the one i want to be with when the sun goes down you're the one i want to be with when the sun goes that's the sound of sunshine coming down that's the sound of sunshine coming down I want to hear y'all sing it now. Let me hear. That's the sound of. Little ladder. That's the sound. The Google Tabernacle Choir in attendance. All right. Oh, you're perfect just the way you are. Just the way you are. Oh, you're perfect just the way you are. Just the way you are. So shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it. You don't want for me. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it, you the one for me now. Shake it, shake it, mommy, you the one for me. I'm realizing you the only one that's meant to be. And when I wake up in the morning, all I want to see is the sun and it's shining on you next to me. You got a little broken nail, got a hair out of place. A little bit of extra metal right around the waist. With all of them things, I never, ever hesitate. Because the thing about you, baby, is a smile on your face. Going kisses at you, girl, I hope they didn't miss. The way you move your body made it hard for them to hit you. I wish you would come a little closer, rub a little closer. Mama, see it, mama, closer. Say it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me. Now, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me. Shake it, shake it, shake it. How you feeling, y'all? I got love for you, baby, never giving it up. I love the way you let me never getting enough. I love the way you shake that little extra bit of butter when I see you move your body. Girl, it makes my heart a flutter when I see you dance upon the living room floor. On the kitchen table, better open up the door. Bring the party to the street because the street will love them more. If the people love the beat, then the beat will love them more. With the music blasting, the people clapping, speakers shaking, the kids will take it. You're perfect just the way you are. You're perfect just the way you are. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me now. Shake it, shake it, shake it. 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 Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it. I say, oh, you're perfect just the way you are. Just the way you are. Oh, you're perfect just the way you are. Just the way you are. Oh, just the way you are. Just the way you are, oh, just the way you are. We need some volunteers from the audience. All right, come on up here, man. Come on up here. Come on up here, come on up. What's your name? 
Give it up for David. You went to UC Davis. Nice. David from Davis. I grew up in Davis. All right, we got a lot of volunteers here. Okay, we're going to have a shake it contest. David, you're first. Don't go to the back, man. Come back up here. Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it. Put your hands together. Shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me now. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Woo! Shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me now. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Give it up for that fun YouTube moment from David. Yeah. Eric. This is Eric with some interpretive dance. Okay, we gotta make this a little more difficult. What's your name? This is Heather, y'all give it up for Heather. This is Heather doing the California condor, the rare endangered species at a NASCAR event. The California condor at a NASCAR event. NASCAR is auto racing. Okay, <laughs> ready? Here we go. Universal. Okay, we got my son. My son Ade doing the robot at Google. What's your name? Give it up for Hillary. She said, be nice. Okay, anybody have a uh, uh, something for Hillary to interpretive dance? Oh, what? The Macarena! Oh, mega two, mega D, Macarena. Oh, mega ba, mega six, Macarena. Obviously, she's been taking lessons at the, at the Google how to be cool at a party dance class, right? All right. So shake it on the beach, girl. Vamos a la playa. Hotter than the sun, you know you set the soul on fire. A bird in the sky, you make me feel like a flyer. Higher, 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 higher. I got love for you, baby, like every single day. Love for you. In every single way, I got love for you in everything that I cook. It's not the way that you look, it's the way that you shook. Everybody, shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, I'm shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, I'm shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, I'm shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me now. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, I'm shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Woo Shake it, shake it, shake it. You the one for me. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Give it up for them, y'all. Eric, David, Sue, Hillary, Sarah, Ade. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> okay. That was a nice little warm up. I like that dude back there. He's got a lot of energy. What department are you in? Ah, no wonder. <laughs> okay, uh, questions, right? Is that what we're doing now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'd love some water. Does anybody have a question? <laughs> What's that? Will you please sing more? Oh, yeah, we'll sing more. Yeah. 
Oh, is that, are we supposed to do questions? Is that how it goes quick? Oh, we mix it up. Okay, we'll take a question. Anybody have a question? Okay. What was it like opening for Mayor? Mayor McCheese or John Mayer? <laughs> oh. uh, John Mayer, it was really uh, a unique experience because right when we started the tour, he had this big article come out in, I guess, Playboy magazine, which I never read, of course. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, he said all these inflammatory, inflammatory things, very, uh, you know, weird stuff, you know, s sexual and racial things. And so I immediately went to him and, and talked to him about it. And at the time, he was super remorseful. You know, he was just like, he said, this is the worst day of my life. I don't know how I can get any worse. And so we talked for a long time. We actually became really good friends around it, you know. And my music has always been the opposite, you know, to try to bring people, different groups together. And um, he, his music is that too, but sometimes his mouth runs in a different way. And so <laughs> we just talked a lot about getting your heart and your mouth to say what you mean and mean what you say, you know? And um, so we had a really great time and it was really cool because we recorded this new album, Sound of Sunshine, in the dressing room of all these locker rooms of the NBA and hockey teams that we were playing in. And so, uh, you know, we'd go out on stage and we'd play a song to 15,000 people who had never heard our music before. And then we'd go in the locker room afterwards and we'd say, you know, we played that one too fast or too slow. And then we were able to just, like, on our laptop, re-record the song. We'd set the drums up in the shower and we <laughs> I'd sing in the shower, which is the best place to sing, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and we made this whole album on tour. And so it was really great to have that kind of, like, interactive capability to be able to see what the audience wants or is responding to and then be able to go in and just make immediate changes and it used to be that you used to make an album for months or spend a year doing it and then you get on the road and you'd realize that god the song is too slow and and so it was a it was a great experience for us to, to be able to have that huge audience to see how people respond so, yeah. so and in the end me and john became great buddies and uh we had a fun time Thank you, man. Thanks. So, so we have the Q&A mic here. I thought I'd, I'd cue things up. Um, tell me more about your, your YouTube story. You were one of the first artists to really use that medium. How'd you get started, and, and what's it doing for you right now? Well, I got started through my son, Ade, who, who was like, yeah, who really got me excited about YouTube. You know, we'd stay up at night, and we'd be like, OK, David Blaine. And we like. <laughs> I mean, like, YouTube David Blaine for six hours, you know, and then it'd be like, the best soccer goals of 2004, you know. And, and, and I'm still that way. I don't have TV, per se, in my house, but I have YouTube, and I have Google. And so we just, that's our way of entertaining ourselves. But um, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to give people a little glimpse of what we do every day on tour? Because... I remember just looking at album covers when I was a kid and I'd see like a photo of The Clash on this album and I'd think like, man, where did that dude get his belt? Or where did, where did they, you know, how does he string his guitar backwards like that or something? And, and so I thought, wouldn't it be cool if like next time I went belt shopping, I just brought my little uh, camera with me and we could show that. And so we created this thing called Fran TV and every day we just do like a two or three minute vlog about our life on tour and sometimes it's as you know mundane as belt shopping and other times we're interviewing somebody who is doing some really creative uh, grassroots political organizing or somebody who has got a fantastic new record or uh, that no one has ever heard of and we interview them uh, or us just playing out on the street somewhere so we love you too you just mentioned some of the ways that um Technology, including technology created by Google, is helping connect you to uh, the, the world and to individuals. What are some of the negative sides of big companies like Google, uh, and what can we do to mitigate those? Hmm. Hmm. Negative things. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll kind of say it. What, what people, what some artists view as a negative is obviously downloading. You know, and it's really changed 
the music business the way that we do it. I was one of the, uh, the artists who never really sold lots of records. So when our music started to get downloaded and traded, it like our career <coughs> mushroomed. It was the opposite. And we always made music for people to enjoy. And we hoped that they would come to our shows and then that they would buy a t-shirt or that they would support us by coming to two or three or four shows. And that's the way our fan base grew. And so we've always been a band that said, let's just ride with the wave of technology, whatever is coming out, let's use it to help spread the word about what we do. And we believe that if you treat the fans with dignity and uh, love and connection, and if they have a request that you try your best to fulfill it, that they always come back. And, and so uh, I don't really see that there's anything wrong. I can't think of anything particularly with Google that's wrong. But um, just, you know, there's, there's so many changes that are, that are happening as we speak in terms of the way music is delivered to people. And we're just a band that feels like rather than try to fight it with lawyers and Congress and all this kind of stuff, that we just go with it and see how we can change what we do and get our head wrapped around it in a different way, in a new way, to help our fans have the music, because that's the most important thing. If Meg Whitman is elected in November, who do you think should do the next California Uber Alice? Oh, wow, well, probably Woody Harrelson. <laughs> because uh, ca <laughs> uh, California Uber Alice is this Dead Kennedy song that was about the governor of California back when, I think he wrote it when Reagan was the governor. And then I did a version when Pete Wilson was governor. But um, yeah, you know, um, I think Woody would be a great person because he's got a great sense of humor and he also smokes loads of weed. And she's, kind of, <laughs> she's kind of contrary to either of those things. <laughs> so he'd be a good person. <laughs> oh, sorry, there's a monitor there. What project music or music or otherwise has had the biggest personal impact? Which one has had the most public impact? I presume they mean, uh, of my work, what project, music, or otherwise has had the biggest personal impact? Um, well, my music always comes from personal experience, but a few years ago I took a trip to Iraq and I played music on the street. And I, was, I kept watching the nightly news and I kept watching YouTube. And the things that I was seeing on the nightly news were completely the opposite of what I was seeing on YouTube in terms of what was happening on the ground in Iraq. And so I said to myself, I'd really like to go to Iraq and see what's happening. So I took my guitar and a video camera and six, six friends and we flew to Amman, Jordan. We hopped in a 16 passenger plane and we flew to Baghdad. And we get over the airport in Baghdad and the pilot says, in order to avoid a hit from a SAM-7 surface-to-air shoulder launch missile or small arms fire from the ground, we will enter into a spiral descent. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what all that first stuff meant, but I know what a spiral is. <laughs> and sure enough, we go into this uh, descent, just spiraling straight down to the ground so you can get down there as fast as possible. And a heat-seeking missile can only make one arc I found out, so if you keep spinning, it can't hit you. <laughs> so I get on the ground, and I played music there, and I had all these songs prepared that were like, you know, peace songs and kind of protest songs that I had written over the years, and I was gonna sing them for people on the ground. And when I got there, I found that people, uh, Iraqis, were like, that's a really nice sentiment, but play us something that makes us dance, and play us something that makes us laugh, play us something that makes us smile or cry, or feel something. And, and so it really changed the way that I thought about music, because the whole first part of my career in music, I wrote lots of really heavy political songs. And then I realized that if I wanted to reach people all over the place, it's, it's like you, you can either teach a, give a man a fish or teach a man to fish, you know? And uh, that's what I wanted to do. I, I didn't want to just tell people about one specific issue or tell somebody that one 
certain person was good or bad. I wanted to open people's hearts so that whatever they viewed in the world, whatever issue it was, that they had an open heart and an open mind to the perspective on it. And so that, that was a really big uh, change in the way that I write music. And so instead of writing political songs, I write songs about whatever I feel, and then I go to those places that I see there's conflict, and I play them on the streets, I make films about it, and then I go back and share what I've learned with people in America and other places around the world. Yeah. All right, let's play another song. <laughs> Last summer, I was on tour and my appendix ruptured in the middle of a tour and I was in the hospital. And every day I would, uh, uh, you know, I'd, I'd go to the window and I'd look to see if the sun was shining, you know, and, and I'd pull the curtain and I'd be like, ah, oh, the sun's shining. And if it was, I'd feel like, ah, oh, yes, it's going to be a great day today and I'm going to heal up. And if the sun wasn't shining, I'd then pull the covers over my head and I'd try to imagine someplace that was sunny, you know. Or I'd pick up a guitar and I'd play and I'd try to make sunshine come out of the guitar or my friends would make me laugh and my stitches would bust open and that would make me laugh more, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I made this whole record, The Sound of Sunshine, is all songs about overcoming adversity. And um, so this is uh, one of those songs. It's been a long time coming that I had to say When I wake up in the morning all I do is pray For some guidance and protection on the streets today And an answer to the questions I ask every day So tell me why did the birds they used to fly here Tell me why did they come to die here And all the kids they used to run here Tell me why did they load their guns here I remember in the days when we were one heart No need to defend I just wrap my arms around you Don't give up, this song is for you Hey, hey no matter how life is today There's just one thing that I got to say Won't let another moment slip away I say hey, hey, hey No matter how life is today There's just one thing that I got to say Won't let another moment slip away I hold on I'm trying to hold on I hold on, hold on, hold on from the tops of the buildings to the streets below From the Wall Street banks to the empty homes Between the lines of the people standing all in a row There's a crack in the gutter where a flower grows Reminding me that everything is possible Yeah, reminding me that nothing is impossible You gotta live for the one that you love, you know You gotta love for the life that you live, you know Singing, hey, hey, hey No matter how life is today There's just one thing that I got to say Won't let another moment slip away I say, hey, hey, hey No matter how life is today just one thing that I got to say I won't let another moment slip away I hold on I'm trying to hold on I hold on I'm trying to hold on Until the morning comes again I will remain with you my friend We will dance until the sun Goes to the place where it begun We will live to laugh and cry another day don't let nobody ever tell you that it couldn't be done. Don't let nobody ever tell you that we couldn't be one. Don't let nobody ever tell you that it shouldn't be sung. Don't let nobody ever tell you you're the only one. No. Singing, hey, 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 no matter how life is today, there's just one thing that I got to say. I won't let another moment slip away. I say, hey, 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 no matter how life is today, there's just one thing that I got to say. Put your hands up high, y'all.
Don't let nobody ever tell you that it couldn't be done. Don't let nobody ever tell you that we couldn't be one. Don't let nobody ever tell you that it shouldn't be sung. Don't let nobody ever tell you you're the only one. Singing, hey, 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 no matter how life is today, there's just one thing that I got to say. I won't let another moment slip away. I hold on. Thanks, y'all. All right. Uh, so, Michael, it looks like we have uh, one more question here. And uh, for those of you in the audience, if anybody has any uh, last questions, feel free to uh, queue up behind one of the microphones. So um, this last question here comes from Susan Mountain View. Uh, Michael, your website promotes health, fitness, and organizations. Can you tell us about how this and events like Power to the Peaceful happen? Do you take the ideas and turn them into, how do you take the ideas and turn them into meaningful action? Well, the first part of the question, um, yeah, on our website, we want it to be a place where people come and don't just uh, check out our music or look at what our tour dates are. We want it to be a place where there's a community that can hang out and that can connect, because that's really what our fans do. They travel to a lot of different shows. And our fans rage and rage in age. <laughs> they do rage in age from, <laughs> from like little kids, you know, to their moms. And then 20 and 20, you know, college age kids, and then on up to like 40 and 50 and 60 year olds. So there's, there's like a really wide range of, of people. So we want our site to be, uh, broad, the issues there to be broad. So we do have like a health part of our site, fitness. Um, we promote a lot of different social justice organizations and um, environmental organizations. And every year we do this big festival in San Francisco called the Power to the Peaceful. And it started off, yeah, <laughs> it started off being a day that we did on September 11th, 1999. And it was a day of art and action that 150 different artists around the world did different events for this man named Mumia Abu-Jamal, who's on death row in Pennsylvania. We felt like his case deserved to be reheard. And so we selected the day 911 because we wanted to say this is an emergency. So we put this on in 1999, and then again in 2000. And then in 2001, of course, the attacks occurred on September 11th. So we wanted this day, uh, uh, or the festival kind of took a shift on that day, and we said, we want this day to be remembered not as a day to beat the drums of war. Um, uh, we want our sadness and our mourning to be something more meaningful. We want it to be a day when we say, how can each of us do something to make the world a better place, a more prosperous place for more people? And, and so that's what the festival became. It became a day when we invite hundreds of different social justice and environmental organizations out to the park in San Francisco, bring a lot of great music, a lot of great food, have activities for kids and families. And we do this giant free concert for 50,000 people. And um, uh, the last part of the question says, how do you take ideas and turn them into meaningful action? And people that ask me a lot, they say, what can I do? And the best response that I have come up with is do what you can. And what I mean by that is I met a woman in Denver a few years back. She said, you know, Michael, I saw your film about going to Iraq. And I thought, what can I do to change the world? I'm a hairdresser. And so what she did is she met several women who were coming because they were having chemotherapy and they were losing their hair. And so she decided to create this one uh, night every week where she would do beauty treatments, hair cutting, whatever, for women who were undergoing chemotherapy. And I thought that was just so incredible. It's like, what can I do? Do what you can. And so that's what we try to do is uh, through our music and through the events that we do is encourage people to, to find ways that whatever it is that your skill is to, to give back. So we have time for one more question. Sure. Uh, should I keep it short then? No. I, it's up to you. Go ahead, okay. as long as you want. Uh, I, I, was, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, uh, you mentioned before, but 
how the economic models for music has changed, and and it seems like you're getting paid more for performances rather than the actual production of the music now, and which means you kind of have to keep touring and keep performing all the time. It seems like once you reach a large body of work that people are listening to all the time, that that seems like something ideally people would get paid for. I don't know if you have. Um, any feelings about that and, and what I, the ideal situation would be or if just if people are accepting reality and that that's not going to happen anytime soon? Well, um, I just think it's a matter of time before uh, there's a model that's worked out so that every time a piece of music is traded, that it's somehow that audio, as actual audio, is identified and that every time it's traded that there could be some way that there was a royalty. I don't know if it's through subscribership or if it's through um, you know, some other means, but uh, I think that in the future, we're just gonna look at this time as a little bump in the road in terms of the sale of music. But I'm not counting on that. I'm, I'm just gonna continue to go out sure. and play music for whoever wants to do it, in part because it's how I earn my living, but mainly because it's what I love to do, you know? And so I think that, uh, um, I mean, we, we do a lot of other stuff, so we find ways to find hard things that we could sell, like I do children's books. Um, I just opened a, a yoga retreat center in Bali that combines, you know, my music and yoga, which is another one of my passions. And um, we have an organic clothing company that does clothes that are beyond just our regular t tour t-shirts sure. you know? and so we're always trying to find ways that we can be enterprising to keep it all afloat and most of the time we're going hand to mouth <laughs> but um, it's better than going um, hand to all. no mouth <laughs> so uh, um, I, I feel really hopeful I feel um, more optimistic about music today than ever before and the reason for that is that I remember when I was a kid, everybody had like their 10 or 15 records in their collection that they loved. And then when it turned to CDs, everybody had like 40 or 50 CDs on one of those really cool black racks, you know, <laughs> like, like from Sharp or Image or something, you know. <laughs> and now <laughs> you have whatever handheld device, be it your phone or iPod or whatever it is, and you have thousands and thousands of songs available. And next, those songs are gonna be somewhere like in outer space on a cloud, <laughs> you know? And all you gotta do is just request it and it's there for you, you know? And you could have millions of songs at your disposal. And so I feel like the more access to music, the better it is for artists. And um, the artists of the 21st century have to become an artist who doesn't just know how to play guitar, but you know how to use Facebook and social networking, and you understand how you can make money beyond just selling a piece of plastic. And as far as I'm concerned, the sooner the plastic things go away, the better. So. On the uh, hand to mouth question, you yeah. still eating red beans and rice? I do, I still <laughs> eat red beans and rice. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> All right. Michael, thank you for a very awesome show. Let's close with one song. All right, cool. Let me just tune this, this guitar. This is a song, I mentioned Woody Harrelson earlier. This is a song that I wrote in Woody's bathroom. <laughs> and um, Woody invited me to his house because he was off making a movie somewhere. And we'd been buddies for a while. And he said, you know, you're recording in LA. You should just hang out at my house because it's empty. And, and uh, so I was... Uh, in the shower at Woody's house and I put some guitar chords down on my iPod and I was playing them back in the shower and uh, I started getting this great idea and you know when you have a great idea uh, you have to write it down somewhere you know you have to like uh, put it on something and, and I, I, I was inspired just going in the bathroom here today because there's all these great ideas up in the bathroom <laughs> and I think that it's a really great thing to do actually is like if you have an idea that there should be a space that you could write it down wherever you were so that when other people came by that they could maybe add something to that or, or it could inspire them in some way. So um, Woody has this great space in his, uh, in his shower and uh, 
I got this idea, it was, it was flowing, you know, and I was like vibing off of Woody's energy in there, man. And, and, uh, and I get this idea and I go, oh, I gotta write this down. And so I look all over and I can't find a pen and I looked everywhere. And uh, so I get this idea like, oh, I know, I'll just put it on the, um, on the glass in the, uh, on, the, on the shower. And so I'm like, I got that one licked, you know, and I write it all, I write this whole song down, and then I get out of the shower and I turn around and the glass is just evaporating. <laughs> and so I panic and, and I pick up my iPod and I, I take a picture. I'm like, technology delivers. <laughs> I'm feeling really, you know, techie at the time, you know. And uh, uh, then I put it into Photoshop and of course it's inside out and backwards and I have to call my friend um, back home to walk me through flipping the picture, which for me was like trying to land a 747 <laughs> on like a piece of ice in the middle of the ocean. You know? <laughs> and um, so I get it turned inside out and backwards right way and I, I read the lyrics and I'm like, oh, this is great, it's like a hit song, you know, I think I wrote. And so I'm sitting on Woody's toilet and he calls and he's like, Michael, how's, how's, how's the songwriting going? And I'm like, Woody, it's going great, man. I think. I wrote a hit song in your bathroom. He says, is it a number one or a number two? <laughs> so this is the song. In, in 23 years, we had never had a song in the top 20,000 before until this song. And this song actually made it into the top 20 last year. And if you know it, sing along. It goes like this. I say, hey. I'll be gone today, but I'll be back coming around the way. The more I see, the less I know. But I know one thing that I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. One, two, put your hands together, y'all. I say, hey, I'll be going today, but I'll be back coming around the way. Seem like everywhere I go, the more I see, the less I know. But I know one thing that I love you, baby girl. I love you, I love you. Make some noise. I've been a lot of places all around the way. I've seen a lot of joy and I've seen a lot of pain, but I don't want to write a love song for the world. I just want to write a song about a boy and a girl. Junkies on the corner, I was calling my name. And the kids on the corner playing ghetto games. When I saw you getting down, girl, I hope it was you. And when I look into your eyes, I knew it was true. I say, hey, I'll be going today, but I'll be back coming around the way. See like everywhere I go, the more I see, the less I know. But I know one thing that I love you, baby girl, I love you. I love you, I love you. We need some more kids up here. We need some more kids up here. Come on up. You too in the tie-dye shirt. Come on up. There we go. Now I'm not a highly metaphysical man, but I know when the stars are aligned, you can. Bumper to a person in the middle of the road. Look into the eyes and you suddenly know. Rocking in the dance hall, moving with you. Dancing in the night or in the middle of June. My mama told me, don't lose you. Cause the best luck I had was you. I say, hey, I'll be going today. But I'll be back coming around the way. Seem like everywhere I go. The more I see, the less I know. But I know, I know. one thing that I love you. Baby girl, I love you. I love you. everybody on your feet now. Everybody on your feet. Rocking in the dance hall, moving with you. I say, hey, mama, hey, mama, close to you. Rocking in the dance hall, moving with you. Hey, mama, hey, mama, kick up your shoes. Rocking in the dance hall, moving with you. Hey, mama, hey, mama, close to you. Rocking in the dance hall, moving with you. I say, hey, mama, 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 I'll be back coming around the way Singing like 
everywhere I go. The more I see, the less I know. I say, hey, I'll be down today, but I'll be back coming around the way you seem like everywhere I go. The more I see, the less I know. But I know one thing that I love you, baby girl. I love you, I love you. Jay Boogie Rock, that guitar hard, man. vocals, Jay Boogie on the guitar, my son Ade, I'm Michael Franti, thanks so much, I learned a lot here today, thanks a lot for having us here, and thanks for all your support, we love you!